ngtuning.com proud sponsors of ucmma hi steve you may not know but i'm a primary school teacher and i've been speaking to my class about this fight and i've got them to draw a few pictures of it so let's have a look then uh, this one's you with your head knocked off and this one's you in a pool of your own blood and uh, as we say about this one, the better, really, as kids can be a bit cruel these days. So, have a good fight tonight, mate, and good luck. Cage Rage. This is Steve Hoppy Hopwood, and welcome. Some people tell you you're either a lover or a fighter. Me, I'm a lover. I just love to fight. And Mr Turner, after hearing them comments, seeing them pictures that you got them little kiddies to draw, it's despicable, it's terrible. I've got a little girl myself, and Sophie, darling, I love you. We've got a four month old on the way. And I tell you what, they're not gonna grow up getting taught stuff like that from you. So therefore, I'm gonna be teaching you one very big lesson. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is in the Cage Rage Heavyweight category. So please welcome your first fighter to enter the cage. He is from Surrey. Please welcome Neil Turner. And your second fighter to enter the cage is from Essex. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephen Hoppy Hopwood! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your fighter in the blue corner. He weighed in at 112 kilograms. He is making his cage rage debut and trains out of extreme taekwondo. He is fighting out of Surrey. Please welcome Neil Turner. And his opponent in the red corner, weighing in at 102 kilograms. He is making his cage rage debut and trains out of London Fight Factory, fighting out of Essex. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Hoppy Hopwood. Incredible size difference with Neil Turner. And again, if we look at it as well though, guys, a nice contrast in styles. Your Taekwondo man against your ground and pound man. Well, I think that Hopwood has had a little bit of stand-up training karate style with uh, Neil Grove. Uh, but, uh, you know, look at the height advantage that Turner has. Karate training with Neil Grove, one of the few men that could probably look Neil Turner in the eye. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Bring and both look nervous, Rob. That's right, as they get it on. Turner refused to touch gloves with Hopwood, he just shook his head. Oh, and immediately Hopwood gets some big shots in. Big left hook by Hopwood. Goes by, guys trade Hop. Hopwood. Hopwood takes looking, it down with the single. Looking for the takedown, does good job to get it to the ground. Right now Turner looking to extend his leg. You still see the, uh, since Turner is so large, he can sprawl out on the takedown by just putting his hooks in. He can reach around <laughs> through the center there. And he's back oh. to his feet. He basically did a splatal without having to work for it. Right. Hotwood still looking for that single leg. Looking to take his opponent. Bigger taller opponent to the ground. Does a good job of doing so. Neil Turner quite comfortable. Looks happy to keep the underhooks in. And when he took of comfortable, Rob, he took a big shot right at the beginning of that round from Hotwood and took it well. He did, but now Hotwood breaks free. Turner holding full guard, trying to fire short shots. Hopwood lands a stiff right to the temple. Does a good job of working his arm inside, looking to posture up, fires a shot, doesn't connect, but Neil Turner could be in trouble. That right hand, that last one connected, Robbie. Big right hand, found a home. Chris, so far, good work by Hopwood against the taller man. Well, you know, if you take, if you take him down to the ground, he's not much taller than you, especially underneath you. But the 
you know, the, the thing is, does Turner have a good jiu-jitsu game? Are those long legs going to play into an advantage? Can he bring him up and attempt submissions? He seems very comfortable underneath so far. Yes, as you said, comfort, Rob. Turner doesn't seem unduly worried at the moment. He's taking this well, isn't he? That's right. He seems very comfortable with it. Steve Hopwood's the one using all of his energy at the moment. He's expending quite a bit. And you heard Leon there, guys. I need to see some work. He's just beginning to think about bringing them back to their feet now. Right. And Hopwood has landed a couple of short shots that have had a serious impact. I mean, we're right here beside him at Cape Side, and we can feel that thud when he hits him. And you can feel the heat from his fans as well, Rob. As they call his name, and they're going to be stood back up. This will be interesting. It's been all Hopwood so far, but will this give Turner a chance now? Well, the problem with it being all Hopwood for me is Hopwood seems the one that seems to have blown some gas in the tank. Turner full smart, kept his gas, sprawls well on his opponent after a short scramble. I'm disappointed with Turner upright, though. He, he, he allows the gap to close naturally. There was no attempt there to use his tools which is that huge height and reach advantage. And with that taekwondo background, I was waiting for the kicks at that range, and they didn't come wrong. That's right, you'd expect him to use them more. You know, it would give him the advantage in the range right now, trying to turn his man, trying to turn Hopwood to his back. Gets an arm in, Hopwood needs to be careful. Turner attempted to go for a rear naked. Good work by Hopwood to escape, but now he's put himself in a mount position. But he's gotten out, very, very good work. But Great work by Turner, too. He's got some good jiu-jitsu positioning. He was able to transition right to the side. And now it's Turner just trying to get those hammer fists into the face of Hopwood. With 1.30 just on the now left in this round. And it's, it's been interesting, to say the least, Rob. It has. It's been, I mean, it's been a majority Hopwood round, but now Turner's turned the tables. It's interesting to see how he tries to work his jiu-jitsu positioning. Well, Turner's a little high here, but he's so long, I don't know if Hopwood's going to be able to roll him. He's trying to headlock and then turn and roll, but the, the length of Turner's body, when he just sprawls out a little bit, it'll make it very difficult to get him over the top. Yes. Making it very difficult for Hopwood to maneuver. Turner needs to pop that arm free from around his neck. Because he's not really getting in anything clean here, though, is he? That's right. If he works for the arm, try to get his head free, it would give him... Well, Turner did the right thing there. All he really has to do is step over and he has a mount. He just needs to slide his knee across the midsection, and then he'll just, you know, naturally pop his head out as he, as he leans forward. But he's content to do these little short shots against Hopwood right now. Right, they won't win the fight, they will score with the judges. Well, there's under 25 seconds left now of this round, and it, as we both said, it was all Hopwood at the beginning. Turner's had his moments since they've got to ground again this time. But with 12 seconds left, Rob, the round overall, who would you go with? My concern is that Hopwood expended a lot of energy in the beginning of the round. You know, he was trying to be relentless with his aggression and his assault, and I felt that the second half of the round, he's really paid for that very difficult round to call. Chris? Well, it's a hard one to call because it's been a, a, a back and forth fight and side, Turner side, did a lot more damage right? at the end of the round, which may stand out in the eyes of the judges. But in the beginning and early, I think it was all Hopwood. Uh, he landed the harder shots. The thing about a big man, though, is when he's landing right on you. Start here, you were saying, Chris. Oh, we'll right take, start, take a look at the replay here. Fight shot, doesn't he? You see him step inside. There was a big left that connected. Knocked Turner's head back. And then you see him switch Beautifully to lower, single leg takedown. Gets him down on his butt. Took him a little while to get on top of him. Good work by Turner for sprawling out of it, but eventually Hopwood did get that takedown. Both had their shares of that first round. But let's see if Rob's right, because Steve Hopwood is breathing heavily here, Robbie. Southpaw stance as well from Turner. Both by standing trading, it's Hopwood that drops for the takedown. And Chris, you mentioned before when we've seen it again, there's a huge advantage when Turner goes for that sprawl, isn't there? Yeah, well, it's easy. He just basically drops forward. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it will slide you underneath him. <laughs> Turner talking to the ref there, Rob calling Leon's attention. What do you think that was to? I think he, he may have said that there was some holding of the glove underneath where obviously it's difficult to see. 
fight, both fighters, hands and arms trapped underneath. Good him. turn by Hopwood. Now he's got himself a single and he can pull through if he drives and pulls. But he does have Turner against the cage, which might make it a little bit difficult. He'll have to push him against there it's and then pull it out. And again, Turner using that height advantage as he just extends one leg backwards to post himself against the back of the cage. Looking to the referee again, something's up with Turner. They've both been stood up. And I don't know what he's complaining about, but he, twice now Turner has spoken to Leon. And they're back upright once more. And a tired punch there from Turner. Out of range. I don't know what he's trying to do there. He's trying to set up that, that left. It's a bit ragged upright, guys. I've got to be honest. A little bit unconventional, but Hopwood connects. Oh, and there was a good uppercut, followed by a left that stumbles Turner. Big left hook sees the big man fall down. Hopwood going for the kill now. In the choke position, his fans are absolutely on their feet. And it that like is it. And he's got it. An okay from that big left hand. And for a series, I've got to be honest, of an awful exchange. Well, but he, he got the one big one that counted. He went unconventional and then threw a traditional uppercut followed by a left hook and cleaned Turner's clock. You can see he stumbled him to the ground. Turner still had his wits about him, but obviously stunned. Hopwood was able to secure the rear naked and finish the fight. And that left hook was flush on the chin, and that set everything else up, as you said. But it was a, it was just the right timing for him because, Rob, they were both very tired by then, weren't they? Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, 45 seconds of the second round, we have a winner due to tap out from a rear naked choke. Let's hear it for Stephen Hoppy Hopwood.